At the age of 17, Jacob Matt Morgan was found guilty and sentenced to prison for a 2015 fire in York County, South Carolina that claimed the life of his infant brother. The image of Morgan sobbing in court attracted attention from all across the world. The mouse that it would take to set a fire in the bedroom where the child is in the crib sleeping. A burn pattern that goes from underneath that child towards the door of the bedroom uh, that is caused by likely something, it's a significant burn pattern as he described it. It could have been alcohol, it could have been something else that gets consumed by the fire, but a significant burn pattern shows that there is something said significant uh, and intentional. And at that point, to start fire in that room is hideous and to walk away, not trying to escape from that fire, and immediately starting another fire in the living room. And then you claim it's an accident that it got out of control. That's an extreme recklessness. And that's intent. That's maliciousness. That's a definition of madness. And as you walk away from the fire that you've just lit in another room with a small baby, walk into the front room, light that fire, and then leave the residence standing outside watching it burn until it becomes too much to go back to. That's madness. And so malice is here in both counts, because all that murder requires is malice of forethought and more fascination with fire to watch that burn, knowing that that child was in there that was going to die, and not calling 911, not saving that child when he could have, and not having started the fires in the first place. He has to take responsibility. And so there's much more here than probable cause. So I ask the court to. Find probable cause of both charges in this case. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. The testimony, good from both sides. Question and testimony. I believe the state has, in fact, met their burden. So, therefore, I am going to find that there is probable cause to charge the individual that he found over four general sessions for both charges. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan, who is now 24 years old, was freed from a South Carolina prison on Thursday, December 1, 2022, after completing about half of his 15-year sentence. Morgan was released from the McDougal prison in Barclay County, South Carolina, at 10 a.m., according to Christy Shane a spokeswoman for the state's Department of Corrections. Disagreement persists. People have been debating whether Morgan is guilty, whether a person of his age and state of mind should have been jailed for the 2015 death of the 14-month-old child on TikTok, Facebook, and other social media platforms for the past seven years. Although Morgan entered a guilty plea in 2016, he has never accepted guilt in relation to the fire near Rock Hill that claimed Joshua Hill's life. Jacob Matt Morgan entered into an Alford plea in 2016, which did not need him to confess guilt but did require him to take the sentence that would have come with a guilty plea. According to officials and court documents, Morgan still faces a further 15 years in prison if he does not successfully complete five years on probation. Anita Dantzler, a representative for the South Carolina Department of Probation, Parole, and Pardon Services, said that he was sentenced to five years of probation following his 2016 conviction, which resulted in the suspension of the 15-year term for arson. During his trial, questions about Morgan's mental condition and prior behavior were raised in court. Authorities had multiple files on Jacob Matt Morgan dating back 10 years before the fire, according to the prosecution's testimony in court. The referrals for outpatient psychiatric care resulted in bipolar disorder, oppositional defiance disorder, and antisocial personality disorder diagnoses, which were documented in the files. Additionally, the prosecution testified in court that they possessed police logs from numerous calls to the police that were made after Morgan allegedly threatened and, in some cases, 
physically attacked family members. For years, Morgan's defenders have maintained that he shouldn't have been put behind bars and that he had no animosity toward his brother. Family members insisted that Morgan did not want to hurt his younger brother both at the time of the incident. And following his guilty plea, his family participated in interviews, which included a 2016 national headline news program with Dr. Drew. Some people even organized a petition on change.org to support Morgan. York County Public Defender B. J. Barrowclough, who represents Morgan in connection with the criminal allegations, expressed his satisfaction at Morgan's eventual release. Jacob Morgan's impending release from prison made me delighted to learn, Barrowclough stated. When I first met him seven years ago, he was a sensitive, gentle young man, but he has since experienced a terrible tragedy. He always retained his innocence and adored his sibling. It is crucial to remember that even the state did not assume that he intentionally killed his brother when it reduced the murder allegation to involuntary manslaughter. Whatever one may think about the case, he has served his sentence, and I am looking forward to his contributing to our community in a positive way. I hope he does well. Prosecutors and law enforcement officials stated in court that Jacob Matt Morgan lied to cover up the crime, and knew his brother would die in the fire. At the moment, Jacob Matt Morgan was watching a child. According to police and prosecutors, Morgan started fires in the family's mobile home without dialing 911 for assistance. The home had allegedly been set on fire two weeks prior, according to the prosecution. According to the evidence shown in court, Morgan confessed to dropping a tea candle behind a blanket in the master bedroom the morning of the deadly fire, and lighting a string on one of the sofa pillows in the main room. He couldn't stamp the fire out once it got out of control because he was barefoot, according to officials. After starting the fire, Morgan never returned to the bedroom where his brother was. He stepped outside to see the fire and then proceeded to a neighbor's house to call for assistance, the prosecution claimed in court. York County Senior Prosecutor and 16th Circuit Solicitor Kevin Brackett told that there is no doubt the fire was started on purpose. According to Brackett, Jacob Matt Morgan should complete his sentences in accordance with the law and any court orders. The criminal justice side of this awful murder may be over, but those responsible will still be affected for the rest of their lives, Brackett said on Thursday. At first, Jacob Matt Morgan was accused of murder and first-degree arson, and he could have spent the rest of his life behind bars. In accordance with the 2016 agreement, he admitted guilt to third-degree arson, involuntary manslaughter, and improper behavior toward a child. According to court records, he received a 10-year term for his illegal behavior and a 5-year sentence for his involuntary manslaughter. Documents suggest that a 5-year probationary period following release from jail was required in order to have a 15-year sentence for the arson suspended. In court in 2016, Barrowclough declared his support for Morgan's decision to enter the Alford plea. In hearings held in May of 2020 and in 2021, Jacob Matt Morgan's parole was denied. Morgan declared in May 2022 that he would switch places with his deceased brother. Morgan told the parole board, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't regret the killing of my brother. I'd be happy to swap places with him. When parole officers questioned Morgan about how he got engaged in the fatal incident, Morgan said he was simply in the wrong location at the wrong time without going into further detail. About half of Morgan's active sentence was completed. Additionally, he was given credit for a year spent in prison without bond while awaiting trial. Morgan informed the parole board that he holds a general equivalency diploma.
According to SCDC records, he received at least six academic credits from the organization. According to officials, Morgan must now report to probation officers to complete his probation sentence. Until he completes probation, Judge Dan Hall's 2016-15 year sentence for arson is still in effect. According to South Carolina law, if a probationer doesn't follow the rules, the authorities may ask the judge to reinstate the 15-year term from the arson conviction. According to Dantzler of the South Carolina Probation Office, Morgan will be paired with a York County probation officer. A normal list of probation requirements provided by Dantzler includes restrictions on handgun possession and travel outside of South Carolina without permission. He must meet with his probation officer on a regular basis. Tell me in the comments below if you think his sentence was too harsh for his age and mental capacity.